Hi everyone. Uh, the first thing that we are going to cover in Calc 2 is finding antiderivatives, otherwise known as antidifferentiation. So this is really um, a, a pretty reasonable step to take after learning all of your derivative shortcuts. The question we'll be asking ourselves is, okay, so we know how to take a derivative can we figure out how to reverse that process? So this is the whole thing where throughout math, we learn how to do something, and then a typical next question is, how do we reverse it? What is the inverse operation or process? So <clears throat> just like differentiation is our verb for taking the derivative, anti-differentiation is our verb for finding the antiderivative or reversing that derivative process. So we've got a definition up at the top. Um, Anti-differentiation is the reverse process of differentiation. And we know that an antiderivative of little f is a function whose derivative is f. Or another way to say that is that we can call function big F the antiderivative and antiderivative. Let me be careful about that. Uh, of little f if the derivative of big F is little f. So this is going to be kind of the key thing we're trying to figure out. Uh, who do we take the derivative of to get whatever we're looking at? So this is the same thing we do with any sort of inverse is we say, okay, we know how to take the derivative. How do we go backwards? So whose derivative do I have to take to get the given function little f? Uh, this is a really typical thing right here, using big F to represent antiderivative. It is not a rule. Every capital letter function name does not have to be an antiderivative. You could call the antiderivative of little f little g or big G or m or whatever you want, but it's something you'll see a lot. It just gives us a kind of convenient way to say, okay, big F is the antiderivative. Um, so big F antiderivative, little f function, little f prime would be the derivative of function, and so on. Okay, so I have a preview activity, and this is going to be typical of a whole bunch of videos. Um, and in fact, not just on the preview activity, the point here is for you to pause and try to work through this. And then if you get stuck, come back and watch videos. If you don't get stuck, uh, you can skip ahead and see if you filled everything in correctly or watch just to make sure that you're understanding. Um, but I have a lot of things where I try and give you stuff one little piece at a time so that you can figure it out for yourself as much as possible, which uh, helps with retaining, with remembering. If you understand it, it's not going to feel like memorization. It's just going to make sense. Okay, so pause, see if you can do the preview activity, uh, and then come back and check in. So preview activity gives us a little Calc 1 review. Um, we're supposed to first find the derivative and then fill in the blanks in this sentence. So this has us use our vocab a little bit. Okay, so if I want to find the derivative of the square root of x, what is going on? My pen is being dead, don't mind me. Here, let me see if I can switch around and get it to start working again. Here, let me save. There we go. Okay, sorry. Um, finding the derivative of oh, the square root of x. Remember that we're going to want to use a power rule on this, so we first need to think about it as x to the one half power, and then the power rule just says drop that down in front, and the new power will be one less than the old power. Okay, so now we can say, and I'm going to rewrite that just to make it look a little prettier, 1 over 2 root x. Okay, we know that 1 over 2 root x is the derivative of the square root of x. So we can also say that the square root of x is an antiderivative of 1 over 2 root x. This one looks a little funny. That's all in the denominator. So this is the general idea. Um, and try not to go on autopilot on something like this too much. Really think about it. If we know the derivative of a function, then we know that that original function is the antiderivative of that derivative. So re reverse processes here, right? Inverse processes. If you take the derivative and then you take the antiderivative, you should get back where you started. Um, okay, so second one, and again, good reminding here, I hope, 
The derivative of tangent is secant squared. So we can say that we know that secant squared of x is the derivative of tangent x, which means that tangent x is an antiderivative of secant squared x. Uh, and note that secant squared is the same over one of, uh, same as one over cosine squared x. Uh, both of these tend to throw people off a little just because they look at them and they don't immediately remember that that's the derivative of tangent. But in particular, when I write it, oh, my pen is trying to quit again. I don't know what its problem is. Hold on. Resetting battery. Sorry, everybody, for the delay. This is actually the second time I've worked through this and had my pen quit, so you're just going to have to wait for a second so I don't have to start from scratch. Okay, working again, perfect. Um, okay, so again, the 1 over cosine squared, um, just remember to look out for that one. That is the same as secant squared, which is uh, the derivative of tangent. Okay. So if we want to take the derivative of 2x squared, that's another power rule. So we'll drop the 2 down in front and we'll say we have 4. We'll replace the old power with 1 less, which means our new power will be 1. So we can claim that 4x is the derivative of 2x squared, which means that we know that 2x squared is an antiderivative of 4x. Okay, and now we get to the part where I'm trying to make a point. You may or may not have figured out what my point is. So next, we want to take the derivative of 2x squared minus 1, which first and foremost is a sum and difference rule, but that's really easy. If you have a subtraction as your big operation, that means you just get to look at the two pieces separately and then throw the minus back in the middle. So we're first going to take the derivative of 2x squared, which we just said is a 4x, and then we're going to take the derivative of 1, which is 0, and throw that minus back in the middle. But it's not very exciting. So we just get 4x. So we know that 4x is the derivative of 2x squared minus 1, which means that we can say that 2x squared minus 1 is an antiderivative of 4x. And one more to make sure you're really getting my point. Same thing here, big operation is plus, so we get to look at the two separately. The derivative of 4x, the derivative of 5 is 0. You do not have to write the plus 0 out for me. I'm just trying to make sure I show all the little pieces, since this might give you some reminders. Um, so we know that 4x is the derivative of 2x squared plus 5, which means that we can also say that 2x squared plus 5 is an antiderivative of 4x. Okay, so here's where we run into a little trouble, a little trickiness. I'm going to make a side note over here. So we have claimed that if we're looking for the antiderivative of 4x, there are at least three possible answers. Uh, it could be 2x squared. It could be 2x squared minus 1. It could be 2x squared plus 5. In general, we don't like ambiguous questions. We don't want to ask a question and say, well, it could be any of these things. So we want to formalize a little bit. Um, so notice I was very, very careful in my wording. Let me snake a color here. Uh, I said that each of these things is an antiderivative, and I want to be really clear that I'm saying that is one of the possible antiderivatives. And there are, in fact, infinitely many. So if I ask you to find an antiderivative of a function, I'm generally just looking for one example of what an antiderivative could look like. If I um, ask you for the antiderivative, and I was just peeking to see, uh, I have this definition on the next page. Pretend I fit that all in there. The antiderivative of 4x, I am looking for the general form. So really, it's not one function. 
it's the whole family of functions that could possibly work and you will see this general uh, form y equals or f of x equals 2x squared plus c and here this c is an arbitrary constant And basically what we would say if you wanted in fancy mathy looking form is that C has to be an element of the real numbers. If you can even read that, that little backwards looking E says element of. Um, so C can be any real number is what I'm getting at there. C can be any real number and you will end up, choose any real number, you will end up with one of the antiderivatives. So the general antiderivative is the family of functions who differ only by a constant um, whose derivative is f and you can see there's interesting things that happen as you get into differential equations I'll talk about the very most baby differential equations in a little bit in this section um, but you'll see interesting things where it's not always a plus c, it can be a times c, it can be other weird things. So there can be different stuff going on with what the whole family of functions looks like, but for our purposes, we're going to be seeing uh, a lot of plus c's. So we're gonna have that going on. You wanna make sure that you don't forget. Okay, I'm gonna cut here. Thank you for watching.